Hello there, YouTubers and weavers. Over the course of the years as doing videos, a number of people have asked me questions. And again, I'm going to use this video as a response to some of those questions. One of the most common questions I get is one that was echoed most recently by someone named Lynn Davidson. And her question was, quote, quick question. You always seem to poke in the middle of the weaving before you beat. Why? Unquote. So I'm going to answer Lynn's question, and I'm going to try and explain this first by reference to some documents, some of the books that I have about weaving um, and learning to weave and how to become a better weaver. And then we're going to take a look at um, a couple examples of me actually doing some weaving and explaining what I'm doing in detail as I do it. The thing that we need to keep in mind is what I'm doing is I'm trying to get my weft tension correct and I'm trying to have um, decent selvages on the edges of my cloth. And when I quote poke my fingers in, there's more to it than just poking my fingers into in between some warp threads. So first let's take a look at some of that intro to weaving and improving your weaving documentation. The first reference is Deb Chandler's Learning to Weave book. In lesson three she discusses minimizing draw-in. In part she says, quote, to keep draw-in to a minimum and to keep it consistent you'll need to weave more weft in the shed than would at first seem necessary. When you weave, instead of having your weft travel straight across the warp, make an angle or curve some other non-horizontal trail." Unquote. The second reference is Lila Lundell's book, The Big Book of Weaving. She says, in part, tension the weft and angle it across the warp. And if you look at both her pictures here, you can see that the weft is always angled across the warp. Finally, let's consider Jean Scorgi's Weaver's Craft magazine from April, May of 2000. In an article entitled Smiling Selvages, she says in part, if the angle of weft is too shallow and not enough weft length lies in the shed to bend up and down around the warp threads, the edge draws in. What's needed to prevent excessive drawing is more weft length in each row. All right, we are at my Ashford table loom. Um, you can see it's all ready to go. I've got some wool warp and I'm using a wool weft and I'm making a shawl so it's about 20 inches wide. So let's first, I'm weaving plain weave, some people would call it tabby. Let's just go from one side to the other. The reason I have a stick shuttle is simply because I don't have a, a lot of threads per inch, there's only eight threads per inch, and with a boat shuttle, I'm afraid it would dive through and fall on the floor. So a stick shuttle works best in this situation. There I've got one weft thread in. I'm going to close the shed, and hopefully you can see following my finger right here that the weft thread is on an angle to the warp threads, it's not straight across. So I'm going to pull it back. Slowly I'm going to beat it. There we are. That's done. Now let's go the other way. Again, I've got it across, I've got an angle, but what I'm going to do now is just hold it right there. I'm not going to try and pull on this, but when I pull it down, 
you can see that because of that angle, when this is straight, I've got maybe an inch more weft thread going across than I do the actual width of my weaving. When I pull it back up to here, it seems like a straight line. Let's close that. Again, you can see the angle of the weft thread right there. There'd be about this inch more over here. So when I beat it, which I'm doing slowly this time, what that did, by having that angle, it allowed enough extra weft thread that it could just go up and down, up and down, up and down to conform to the position of the warp threads. That little bit of up and down prevents it from drawing in at least as much. You get a little bit, but not nearly as much as if I had that tight straight across because I need to have that extra thread in there. So that's how this process of a weave, it's called a weaver's angle, and giving me a little bit more weft thread to go across to account for that up and down movement in the weft. That's how you see it here on my table loom using a fairly thick yarn that's made out of wool. Okay, YouTubers, I'm back at the floor loom and this is a fairly wide project. Um, it's 41 inches from end to end or side to side of the warp. Um, I've forgotten how many warp threads it is, but it's a, it's a boatload, believe me. So we're going to do the same thing on here. We need a weaver's angle, but it is very wide. So I'm going to, first I'm going to do this just laying it out on top. You can see I've got a weaver's angle and it's probably enough so that we don't get too much drawing. You'll also notice that I do have a temple on here. That helps to um, prevent drawing too by keeping the piece as wide as the loom. Okay, so let's actually throw the shuttle across and take it out the other side. So you, to get the weaver's angle, I have to reach over and do that. That leaves me my thread going like this. But to me that's uncomfortable and I don't feel comfortable doing it with my hand over here either. So I'm just going to pull this back this time and we'll take a look going the other way. Let's go the other way now. It didn't go all far enough, but I don't always throw hard enough. So again, notice as I pull it out, that thread is right about there and it's laying fairly close to the opening of the shed. And that's not enough of a weaver's angle. Yes, I could go back with my hand and do that, make it nice and wide. Can you see the thread there? Going out to there. But that's still kind of putsy to do. So what I prefer is to put my fingers in the middle and bubble and have the angle go up toward the middle and then come down toward the selvage edge where I'm coming out. That still gives me a bunch of extra thread but now I have my a good angle there. So now I can beat. Let's go across again. And again, what I'm doing is I'm pushing away on the war on the weft thread so that I get a very nice angle like this. And I can beat. I don't tend to throw as hard with my left hand. So again, let's go down to where it's even and you may be able to see the weft line going up toward the middle and down like that. I find I can do this with the hand that is not holding the shuttle. I'm right in the middle. I've got a good angle to get me a little bit of extra weft thread and my hand is right next to the handle. So when I pull, 
I'm nice and close. And that explains to you what I'm doing when I poke my fingers into the warp. I'm giving myself a, an angle or a bubble, it's sometimes called, uh, so I have a little bit of excess weft thread which helps me to have a little bit less draw in on the finished piece or the woven piece of cloth. I hope that explained the poking with my fingers, why I do it and what its purpose is from my perspective. I know other people do it differently. They tend to go with that angle. That's great. Do whatever you feel most comfortable with when you're weaving. But this is my way of getting a little bit of extra weft thread into each pick across so that I do a little bit to improve my selvage edges and try to not get too much draw in from the sides. So there you go. That answers that question. All future references to that question, and I'm sure someone's going to ask it again in a month or two or more, I will just point them at this video. And hopefully that answers the question. Anyways, if you like my videos, I would appreciate you subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you are already a subscriber, thanks a million. I do appreciate you subscribing. Uh, by the way, my YouTube channel is not monetized by YouTube. I don't make a penny off of this. I do it because I enjoy sharing what little knowledge I have of weaving with uh, anybody who wants to watch. So thanks a million for watching. I will catch you the next time around on my video camera. Bye-bye.